This lecture examines the length tension relationship for cardiac muscle. In order to explain the length tension relationships, we're going to take a piece of ventricular muscle. Usually this is done using a ventricular papillary muscle. And we're going to put this muscle in a muscle bath. And we're going to attach a force transducer to one end. And we're also going to be able to change the, the length of that muscle by stretching it to different lengths. And so when the muscle is at its resting length or unstressed length, if we plot the tension versus that length at L sub zero or the unstressed length, we would have a very, very small tension because the muscle is totally relaxed and flaccid. Then if we stretch the muscle, increase its length, its preload length, we'll find that as we stretch it from length L sub zero to L sub one, that there'll be a small increase and passive tension. This is analogous to taking a rubber band or a spring and stretching it. And as you stretch it, it will resist that stretch and counter that, that stretch by developing force or tension. While that muscle is being kept at this new increased length, we are now going to stimulate that muscle electrically so that it will contract. And when we do that, we will see that the force or the tension will increase. And the tension that is developed, the maximal tension, is called the total tension. And it is the sum of the active tension generated by the contracting muscle plus the passive tension. Now we're going to stretch the muscle incrementally to length L sub 2. As we stretch the muscle, there will be a further increase in passive tension and then we will stimulate the muscle to contract once again to develop force and when we do so we will have a very large increase in total muscle tension and the red line which is depicting the active tension is also increased and finally let's stretch the muscle again to a third length L sub 3 and as we do that there is a disproportionate increase in the tension because as we continue to stretch that muscle it resists the deformation increasingly. So with this increased length at L sub 3, we now stimulate the muscle to contract again, and we develop total tension and active tension. Note, however, that the active tension is not really much greater, in fact, is slightly less than it was at the shorter length. We can summarize these experimental results by plotting the data such as this. This is the what we call the passive length tension curve for the cardiac muscle. Note that at short lengths, as you increase the muscle length, that the tension does not increase very much. As we get to really long lengths, there is a large increase in the passive tension, characteristic of biological tissues. If we stimulate the muscle to contract at different lengths, then as we increase the length from L1 to L3, we get an increase in the total tension that is developed by the muscle. And if we subtract the passive tension from the total tension, we then get this active tension curve. And this is the amount of force generated by the muscle in response to contraction. And you can see that the maximal active tension is occurring at this particular length of the muscle prior to contraction or the preload length. Beyond that length there could actually be a fall in the active tension or reduction. Normally the heart is working on this region of the active length tension curve, meaning that as you increase the preload length of the, of the muscle fibers prior to contraction there will be an increase in the active tension development. In summary, Increased stretching, which represents an increase in preload on the muscle, will first increase the passive tension, that's the tension prior to contraction, and then increased stretching will increase the total tension during contraction, and finally, increased stretching increases active tension until a peak response occurs.